Okay, so um, we'd like to welcome Larry Seiler for our information session about um, military applications to um, specifically the Naval Academy today. So Larry, you want to give us a little brief introduction about yourself and yeah, well, thank, yeah, thank you, Mrs. Rose. It's I'm just so excited to be here with everyone. Uh, thanks for thinking of me to co come out today. Um, you know, I, I represent the United States Naval Academy. Uh, I actually spent four years there with uh, Mrs. Rose's son. We were roommates. So it's just really great to come back and talk about some of the great times uh, we had and, and, and the great opportunity that ended up being for, uh, for myself and for many others that attended. Um, you know, I, I guess I will first maybe tell you a little bit about my story and how I ended up you know, attending the Naval Academy. Uh, I'd like to show you all, you know, what the Naval Academy is and what the experience is like. Um, and then just have, have a conversation about it. And I, I hope that, you know, in, in everybody's journey, there's usually somebody that kind of makes that link to show you that it's a, an opportunity that you can go out and pursue and grab. And you know, for me, I was fortunate to have a few of those and hopefully I can you know, fill that role for, for some of y'all um, this morning. So let's, uh, let's start from the beginning, I guess. I, um, I was in your shoes in call it 2004, uh, I um, just like, like many of you, I was thinking about, I was in high school, I was a sophomore, and thinking about all the different opportunities that are out there, all the colleges, uh, trades, you name it. Um, and I found that personally, I, um, I loved being part of a team. I never really, I didn't want to do a traditional office job at any point in my life. Um, and of course, now that I'm out of the military, I'm doing an office job. But you know, for, for, for many years, um, I uh, got to serve in the, the Marine Corps. And I, um, and I, I was very patriotic. I'm, I'm, I'm always very appreciative for what, what our country provided me and my family uh, from a small town, um, you know, close-knit community, a lot of patriotism. I just wanted to, um, to do something that was bigger than myself. And, um, and eventually, I kind of had ambitions to go to college on one side, and I had patriotism and wanting to serve my country on the other side in places like the Naval Academy, places like West Point, the Air Force Academy, um, even different programs and colleges allowed me to do both things, uh, to go get a degree and then serve as a leader in the military. And there's many different approaches to, to service, and I'll go through some of those later, but um, you know, the service academies are just world-class institutions. They're a lot like um, people talk about the Ivy League schools and some of the really good colleges. And I think service academies um, pound for pound are, are right up there. Uh, so I was you know, fortunate to have you know, be able to get a great education and um, you go off after graduation and, and be a leader uh, among Marines or, or sailors. I, um, I'll talk about the admissions process in itself, but I will tell you that the Naval Academy's admissions process is, is, is quite difficult for a reason. You know, we're, we're looking for people that, young men and women that can um, commit themselves to something. And uh, yeah, the, the application process is quite a commitment more so than your typical university. Um, and just in brief, you, know, you have to one, you know, have a nomination from you know, your, your congressman, uh, two, um, you have to pass like a physical fitness exam and a medical exam, uh, which isn't standard in other, um, in other application processes. And I think and on top of all that, you just have a very challenge, you know, a very rigorous uh, selection process, just from a standard SAT perspective, GPA perspective. Um, but the one thing, I, a common theme throughout this hour is going gonna, is gonna to be, yes, it, is, it, is it difficult? Yes. Is it selective? Yes. But if it's something that you want to do and you've worked hard in school and you have something that you can contribute to your country, uh, it's something that it's, it's available to you. You just have to, to you know, ask the right questions, talk to the right people and, and, um, and prepare yourself early in your, um, in your, in your high school career. Um, so I, I attended the Naval Academy from 2007 through 2011. An interesting part of my story is I, I did not get accepted the first time. I, I didn't didn't quite hit the bar, but thankfully I had, I had a really great um, counselor who advocated for me in front of the Naval Academy. I'm not sure if it was an official thing or an unofficial thing, but they actually gave me a, 
a, uh, an offer to go to prep school for one year, which I'll explain later on. But it was, it was a great way for me with a lower SAT score um, to, to work hard and gain entry to the, the Naval Academy. Um, I don't want to get I don't want to get into too much before the, uh, the presentation here, but I went to the Naval Academy. I majored in political science. I modern Arabic. The Naval Academy has, has all different majors, just like any other institution. And I um, I served in the Marine Corps for seven years afterwards. Um, I left as a captain in 2018, um, but that that was my service afterwards. I think one of the most unique things about the Naval Academy and the other service academies is that whenever you graduate, you go into, you know, one of the, the Navy or the Marine Corps, um, and that the whole college is set up that way. So it's really interesting to have a group of people that are all going into uh, service after college. But I got to do so many fun things as, as a Marine. Um, I had, at 24 years old, I was in charge of you know, 100 young men and women who enlisted in the Marine Corps and um, some older, some younger. Uh, it was just a, a real blast. I think when I think about what drove me to, to, to go the direction I went, um, yeah, I, I love the adventure uh, that's associated with you know, military service. I, I got to spend six months on a boat. I got to visit, you know, call it seven or eight different countries, uh, sleep under the stars, sleep in the rain sometimes, all this all those fun parts of life that I can look back on and say, wow, that was, that was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a fun, fun part of my personal story that I hope some of you have the opportunity to experience at some point um, in the future. If you don't want to sleep in the rain, it's okay. You can join the air force or the Navy. You don't have to be a Marine like, like I was. Um, so let's, let's just get into it, everyone. I'm looking forward to presenting this presentation um, from the Naval Academy on, on the admissions process. Um, and I'm looking forward to kind of opening things up a little bit to talk through some different uh, different parts of the experience or, or just whatever whatever's on everyone's mind this morning. Okay, let's see if technology is going to work for me today. Um, is my screen showing up for everyone? Okay. All right, so I am looking at my screen away from my camera. Um, so if, if you're missing any kind of eye contact, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll, 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 do, I'll do my best. All right, so let's. Yeah, this is this is about a thirty-page presentation. Uh, I think some pages I'm going to go through rel relatively quickly, but others I'll I'll take a pause and we'll talk through it a little bit more in depth. Um, and you know, if if a question comes up, I, how about for now we kind of hold it till the end and we can kind of revisit some things. Um, and, and if and if not, I'll assume that everything I'm saying makes perfectly good sense and that uh, there, I've addressed all the questions uh, in the room. So. Okay, um, yeah, so this, this is you know, a picture of the Naval Academy graduation. Uh, this is just this is a huge moment in everybody's um, experience that goes there. It's when like, usually the president or the secretary of defense comes by and hands everybody their diplomas and um, everyone goes off from being a student and then goes to a, a leadership position in the Navy or the Marine Corps. Uh, the, folks, the folks in the good looking black uniforms are Marines. Uh, the folks in the white uniforms that are still good looking um, are, are, are going to become naval officers. It's so a location of, of, the, um, of the school. It's a beautiful campus uh, located in Annapolis, Maryland. Um, it was, it's, it's been there since the 1840s. Uh, and since 1846, has been training the, the next generation of Naval and Marine Corps officers um, to go off and serve, serve the country. Um, you can see it's, it's a self-contained um, campus with you know, barber shops. Uh, you'll notice an armory. That's not something you see on a usual college campus, but there's a full armory. Um, you know, World-class athletic facilities. Um, I, I hope that you, you, if, if you're interested, you get a chance to visit. It really, uh, really makes it, um, it kind of gives it, you'll have a different appreciation for it uh, upon seeing it. And we'll talk about some of those opportunities as well. So I guess this is a, a slide where the, uh, the Naval Academy is going to brag about itself for a moment and talk about how far up in the rankings it is. It's, let's just say it's, it's, it's a great school and this is you know, some information validating that. You can see the distribution between men and women. Um, here's a good one. This is, so I mentioned that the Naval Academy is, is it's a college just like um, just like Harvard is, just like Penn State is, it's, it has a full array of, of majors. Um, 
you can see that we have, uh, I think a lot of people go to the Naval Academy uh, wanting to be engineers. It's, it's probably one of the top three or four engineering schools in the country. Um, it, recently, there's, there's been a, a push towards uh, cybersecurity is, is a, new, um, a new discipline in the military and the Naval Academy is leading that, that effort. You can see they have cyber operations, information technology, computer sciences. And then, um, you know, for folks like myself that, that aren't as excited about engineering, there's you know, the humanities, like political science, languages, history, English, economics. So that's you know, part of, I think people that go to the Naval Academy, they, they, they tend to see themselves serving somewhere in the Navy or the Marine Corps. And they also have, just like any college student, ambitions um, in, in a different major. And you can have both by going to a um, service academy. This might be getting a little bit in the weeds. Um, it, you can figure out what the schedule looks like when you get there. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of move on there. Um, it's generally small class sizes. Um, you'll have great, just like a normal college, you'll have professors that are civilians, but in the Naval Academy, there's also professors who are, who are military as well. And you will, um, you'll notice the uniforms, right? Uh, that's not also not something that's, uh, you'll see on a college campus. Um, it, it is folks that go to the Naval Academy, they, they live a um, you know, it, it, they live a military schedule. Uh, you know, it's, and it's, it's all done on purpose, right? If you're, um, it, you kind of go through, you just, by being engaged in the military every day, you're, you're prepared upon graduation to, um, and just take the next step and, and kind of leave the Naval Academy and carry the military stuff into the, the real operating forces. Um, I don't want to get too into it here because there's there's lots to talk about on the military side that I can kind of better talk through with um, a better better slide up. Here's some of the schedule that you know um, a uh, a midshipman, a student in Naval Academy will um, go through. It's as you can see, it's a little bit, little bit demanding, right? It's 5.30 in the morning, uh, waking up and exercising. Uh, everybody at the Naval Academy plays some kind of sport, whether it's um, varsity athletics, it's a club sport, um, some kind of you know, other um, intramural activity, but it's, it's structured. And I think, you know, for some people, something like this just isn't what they're looking for, and that's totally fine. There's so many great folks that don't want to exist on a structure like this in college, but for some, Folks, I think myself included, uh, a structure like this brings out the best in somebody. And you, you, you go through this for a few years and you just, um, you're used to demanding schedules. And because it's, um, it, the military, the real operating military isn't easy and this um, kind of prepares folks for it. Some of the sports, and if, you know, if anybody here is like, has division one, Athletic ambitions, the Naval Academy is a great place to pursue those. Uh, there's full, full array of sports, um, both men's and women's. I do want to say, I'm, uh, Mrs. Rose will have this presentation. So if you ever want to reference it in the future, by all means, uh, if, I, if I miss something that interests you, don't, uh, don't fret, it'll be, it'll be available. And club sports, intramural sports. Um, Again, just like in any other university, there's lots of different extracurricular activities um, you know, from music, cultural clubs, um, different, just whatever you'd see on a standard college campus, you'd see the Naval Academy. More of these. It's not uncommon for just like other students study abroad, it's not uncommon for midshipmen to study abroad for a semester or two. This is a fun slide. Uh, this is, this is a, there's many reasons to go to the Naval Academy, but this is certainly a, a great one. Uh, and Naval Academy is fully funded by taxpayers. So all students that attend, um, they don't pay for college. Um, it's, it's a full, it's fully paid for um, because it's a, a, a national service academy. So it's, um, it's a great way to get a phenomenal education. Um, you know, for, for free. At the same time, I think you, you do end up paying it back in a sense that you're going to spend five years 
in the operating forces uh, after the, the Naval Academy. Um, you don't, don't think that you're just doing it for free. Uh, you, you get paid a very competitive salary, just like any other post-college career, um, but you do have to serve five years in exchange for um, having your, your college fully funded. It's, it, it's a really, really cool part of the experience. I think it's in some ways for, for me, knowing that the taxpayers were, were funding my education uh, gave me a, a different kind of motivation to, um, to study hard and, and, and do great while I was there to prepare myself. Um, I think that's the same for many midshipmen. Uh, and you can see also that you do get a, a monthly stipend to help with living expenses while you're there. Um, I think a good question is like, how big is the Naval Academy? How many midshipmen are there? I think it's the, the, uh, the number is about 1,000 per class year. So 4,000 total any one time freshman through, through senior. Okay, so let's, we talked a little bit of, about how the Naval Academy is similar to a, a college experience, you know, majors, you know, four-year institution, um, you know, well-respected across all, all academic disciplines. So maybe we can switch gears here and talk a little bit about what the military experience absolutely actually looks like. Because I'm sure it's a lot of what's on your mind as well. Um, this military might be interesting, but what's it really look like at one of these service academies? So um, we'll start with, I think everybody's kind of heard of basic training. I think anybody that goes into the military has some sort of basic training. The Marines tends to be a little bit harder than others, but it's either here or there. Um, the Naval Academy, every incoming freshman goes through plebe summer. It's like a six to eight week experience that is just indoctrination into the military. Um, it's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it boot camp because you're not, it's not just sending a bunch of young students to um, you know, learn how to follow orders and march and uh, do physical events. It's, it is its own experience. You're taking the best and the brightest from across the country into the Naval Academy, uh, forming them together as a team and teaching them how to think as leaders. Uh, it's very demanding, but um, it, it, it creates the foundation for everything else that happens at the Naval Academy. Um, so that's that's the first summer. I'd say that's the least fun summer of the four summers. After that, it gets really exciting. Um, you'll spend just like maybe someone in college, you'll spend the entire summer at home. Uh, you'll still spend about one third of your summer at home, but the other two thirds, you'll be out uh, experiencing different parts of the military. Um, you know, in, in your sophomore summer, you spend time on, on a, um, a Navy warship, kind of shadowing people and seeing what, what goes on day to day uh, from, uh, not from the officer, not from the leader's experience, but from the folks that are being led. Um, you know, then there's, there's other events like uh, you know, there's sailing, uh, there's doing different leadership development activities at the Naval Academy. As time goes on, you start to think, well, this is where I see myself serving in the military. Maybe I want to be a Marine or I want to be a fighter jet pilot or I want to be a Navy SEAL. Your summers start to cater towards where you see yourself in the military. Um, you'll do, if you're a pilot, maybe you go spend a uh, summer with a, a fighter jet squadron and, and ride in the backseat for a few, few trips. Or if you're a Marine, you spend time learning how to uh, survive outside or plan tactical maneuvers, things like that. Um, so it's, it's just, there's a whole array of things that you can do over the summer that just uh, give you some um, exposure to what the military is. So whenever you do graduate, um, you have a sense for, you know that you're going the path that best, best fits you. So that's some of the summer experience. And as I said before, what makes the Naval Academy unique is all 4,000 students that are in school at that time know that their, their first career is gonna be as a, a leader in the military. Uh, the Naval Academy graduates many different disciplines. I think the, I'll, I'll run through them quickly and if everybody has questions about them, I can answer them later on. But the Naval Academy graduates na leaders in the Navy SEALs, um, fighter jet pilots, uh, helicopter pilots, transport pilots, and just a fun fact, if you want to be a pilot, any of the armed services, you have to be um, 
an officer or generally a college graduate. Um, you can be on, on a boat, like a, an officer or a, um, on a boat or a submarine. Um, and some folks join the medical corps, become in Navy doctors. Uh, nowadays, the cyber uh, warfare division is a big one, but you know, every student is at the Naval Academy thinking, you know, someday I'm gonna be in the Navy. I wanna find out what the right choice is. Um, and generally, most people get their first choice in what they, they wanna do. There's a lot of, unless you wanna be in a very small community, like the Navy SEALs, it's a little bit harder to get the Navy SEALs. Um, it's a little bit harder to become a doctor, but if you want to be a pilot or if you want to be a Marine or you want to be on a, a warship or a submarine, generally that's available as a first choice to, um, to, to students. I've, I can't really recall folks getting uh, a second choice. I think there was a, a time when myself and Mrs. Rose's son were in school, there was a shortage of submarine officers. They were trying to help get more people to go one direction, but generally uh, folks do what they, they set out to do. Some cool pictures of some, some uh, pretty neat pieces of hardware in the US Navy. We've got some aircraft carriers. These are all different ships that um, Naval Academy graduates serve on and lead sailors on. Submarines, um, very engineers tend to go towards submarines. Uh, it's a very sought after field. I always tell people in a, in a different life, I might've been a fighter jet pilot, uh, but you know, we, I have friends that, that flew F-18s and now are flying the Raptors, um, and different, different planes and, and helicopters. These are some pretty, pretty motivated individuals that do this kind of, kind of thing. Uh, every year about 30 Naval Academy graduates go off into the special warfare uh, community. And of course, um, the, the, the best choice you can make coming out of the, Marine, uh, of the Naval Academy is to join the Marine Corps. Um, but about 250 or so out of 1,000 um, that graduate the Naval Academy tend to go on the Marine Corps, whether it's Marine Corps pilots or Marine Corps ground. There's some statistics. I was right along with the Navy SEALs, okay. I guess it's a little bit fewer on the, the Marine Corps ground. Uh, the Marine Corps side. I'm pretty close, about 250 between pilots and officers, um, ground officers. So that's kind of what the breakdown of the class looks like uh, as far as what, what they do. So these are, you think of these as like their you know, first career out of college instead of being you know, a banker or a lawyer or a teacher, um, you're a military officer. Um, so it's really, um, it's a great, a lot, some people will be officers for 20 years and retire that way. Some folks will, like me, do it for seven or eight years and go off and do something exciting in the civilian world. So it's not, don't think of it as like a black or white choice. So you can, you can do a little bit of both. And generally in the civilian world, people look for, um, employers look for folks with military experience that can bring that leadership into, uh, into an organization. I'm not gonna go too far into this. Um, actually, no, let's, let's, let's take a pause here because I'm sure that there are some folks on, in the audience who are maybe, maybe uh, in 10th grade or uh, going into their junior year. Uh, the Naval Academy has programs that can expose students early on um, to, uh, to the Academy via like a, a, summer, uh, a summer experience. This one here is one I'm less familiar with, but you know, students that have ambitions in engineering, um, whether you want to go to the Naval Academy or not, but if you just want to have an experience to, to show you a little bit about what it's like, uh, you can apply to the STEM program. Uh, I mean, the website's here. Um, you can go there and take advantage of the Naval Academy's state-of-the-art engineering facilities. You can see a little bit about what um, you know, Annapolis is like, um, but it's something that you would apply to ninth, 10th, or 11th grade. The one I'm more familiar with is the Naval Academy Summer Seminar. And this is a great program for students. Um, maybe you're not as familiar with the military, um, but it sounds intriguing to you. Um, or, or, or maybe you just want, or maybe you really want to go to the Naval Academy and just want to like, get, get, get a taste of it a little bit early. 
uh, the Naval Academy holds a summer seminar session for folks that are going into their senior year. So juniors will apply for this early into their junior year. And uh, if they're accepted, they will uh, spend a few weeks, or actually it's actually only about three or four days in the summertime, um, experiencing like a mini Naval Academy experience. Um, just if some people, it's, it's competitive, just like any other summer program is. Uh, if you don't get into the Naval Academy Summer Seminar, do not worry. You, it's, it doesn't mean you won't get in as, a, as an applicant for the full, you know, the full program. Um, but it's, I just, it's just a really great way if you don't have folks in your family that were in the military, you don't have a real good perspective of what it's like, um, you, you can do this and gain an appreciation for it. And maybe it's something you love. Uh, I know I went and I was just completely hooked on it. I thought it was just the coolest thing and I didn't want to go anywhere else after it. Or maybe you go there and think, maybe it was a different direction I want to take. And that's, that's totally fine too. And the Naval Academy does seek out students that are going to have less um, exposure to, to the military. Um, so it's not, you know, there's definitely an SAT score and GPA element to it, but it's not, it's not all numbers. It's you're looking to get as many folks exposed to the Naval Academy as possible. So this is pretty simple. I, I'm not, I guess I, I don't know. I don't think this would affect anybody as far as being 17 years old. Uh, there's a citizenship requirement before, um, before entering the Naval Academy. Uh, I don't think any married. I don't think any of these uh, probably wouldn't um, be constraints for too many folks applying from high school. We'll snapshot of the admissions website. Um, okay, let's, so this is the actual um, application process. And I think this might be a good place to, um, to take a quick pause and think about all these steps and how someone in your shoes, whether you're a sophomore today or a junior today, how you can um, best um, approach this. And do we have any, any se oncoming people that are seniors next year on the call today? Or is everybody, how about primarily juniors or seniors? One senior, okay. one junior. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay. Um, so, I think for the senior on the call, it's going to be a little bit more, um, I think a little bit more time sensitive. And for whoever's an oncoming junior, you can, you can think about the summer programs and then applying as your junior year um, comes down to it, to an end. Um, and, you know, the, and to start this out, this is a big application process. Um, and everybody, I know I had a lot of help with it. And if it's something that either of you thinks is, you know, interesting to you, like I personally want to be as helpful as possible to you. So I'll give you my, my information. I, I know that it's based on setting this up that the, the folks um, who, who set up the call want to be as helpful as possible. Uh, so don't, don't try to do it all yourself. Um, you can seek out guidance where you can. Um, so the Naval Academy application um, has a few different elements. I think the first, and it's not on here, but there's two things you have to get past. One is you have to get a nomination from your congressman or senator. Um, that is an application within itself. So what you would do is you find out who represents you in Congress and go on their website and look at Service Academy nominations you do a full application for that. Letters of recommendation, SAT scores, uh, personal statement, um, and that will go through your congressman. Uh, that, those applications are open today for oncoming seniors. They will do interviews in fall. And around November and December, uh, they will uh, make selections. Every congressman in the country can make so many um, nominations. Um, that's one side of it. 
you're also going to do an application for the Naval Academy, like admissions, just like you would for any other college. Um, it, it's going to start with you know, a full application with your activities and your your, your GPA, your SAT scores, uh, you know, essays. But in addition to that, the Naval Academy requires everybody to take you know, a fitness assessment. So you have to do a with the gym teacher, you do like a mile run and some pull-ups, some push-ups. So you have to take that fitness assessment because the Naval Academy is a little bit more physically demanding than uh, a standard college experience. And then you have to receive uh, a medical exam. So once you complete enough of your application, you'll receive a invitation to do a medical exam. So it's not something you go out and find, it's something that you do once the Naval Academy sends you once you've completed enough of the application. And then you'll do a blue and gold officer interview. And that's one of the reasons Mrs. Rose asked me to, to talk today is because I, in my home state of Connecticut, I'm a blue and gold officer. So every year I'll do five or six interviews with folks that um, want to attend the Naval Academy. And just like the medical exam, you don't, you don't have to seek out your blue and gold officer. I, You'll, you'll receive a, um, a notification of who that person is once you've completed, I think, 70% of your application. Um, blue and gold officers like me, uh, we're not full-time Naval Academy representatives. We all have different jobs and things we do, but on the side, we'll, we'll, we'll interview and just give the Naval Academy a different perspective on the applicants. Um, so I'd say, I wouldn't necessarily be looking for blue and gold officers in, um, in Houston right now, but as you complete the application, uh, please like reach out to, to me. Uh, I'm happy to help you. And eventually the time will become right that uh, you'll get an invitation to interview with a blue and gold officer. And uh, I know this is like a, a lot of steps and I, I don't want to get too, too in the details right now. I think the most important takeaway is the Naval Academy application is very, very um, time consuming. Um, seek, seek help from, uh, there's lots of people willing to help, myself included, to help through different parts of the application process. And the most important thing is to start early. So if the senior on the call here today is interested, uh, now is a great time to get started and putting these things together over the summer so that you're, you know, you're one of the first applications that shows up um, to the nomination and one of the first applications that shows up in front of the blue and blue officer and in front of admissions. Uh, and then the, the junior on the call today um, should be looking at you know, doing the Naval Academy summer seminar uh, to get some exposure to it if it's interesting and beginning this process at the very end of, of junior year. That was quite a mouthful guys, but if there's any, any, any questions that come up or if, if you're interested, we can keep talking through different aspects of it. Some of the physical tests that I talked about here, um, not, I think it, most people that go to the Naval Academy have participated in some sport at some point in high school. So it's, um, this is a, we're not looking for marathon runners, but you have to be in good physical shape to begin the experience. We'll get the medical examination invitation once you complete enough of the application. And then um, the nominations, that's an application that's required in addition to the Naval Academy. So let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the qualifications and some of the ways you could, it, gain entry to the Naval Academy. Um, I think your typical student uh, and your average SAT score, like your kind of your high and low is generally between on the verbal 560 verbal to 860. Uh, on math, it would be uh, 590 to 690. ACT scores range 26 to 32. And the GPA average unweighted is about 3.6. And I say all that just to give you like a goal to shoot for maybe, um, but if you're below that, I don't think this, is, this experience is, is close to you. Um, we're not looking for, I always say, tell people, we're not looking for rocket scientists. We're looking for just really high quality individuals who are capable of 
being developed into leaders in the Navy and the Marine Corps. Um, so it's not just about GPA and uh, SAT. It's about you know, having a great story and doing great activities or um, you know, just um, it's, it's the whole person concept. Um, and and it's, it's no secret that nominations in Houston, Texas are incredibly competitive. So there's a good chance maybe you apply for a nomination and you're highly qualified, but there's many others that received a nomination and you didn't. Um, you can take the path less traveled like me. Uh, every year, Naval Academy offers um, prep school to 100 students, um, of which I was one. It would ne I would never be in a position to attend the Naval Academy if it wasn't for the foundation program. Um, so that's one way to do it. If you don't get a nomination, the second way is the Naval Academy has its own prep school that it sends students to. Um, and many times it's students that it just maybe don't have the resources to have uh, a personal SAT tutor, um, tutor or don't have all the, don't have exposure through different family members to the military. Um, the, the Naval Academy is looking for a, a really great and diverse officer corps that represents the country. Um, and uh, you know, these prep schools uh, exist for, for folks like maybe, definitely for me with a lower SAT score and for, for folks that don't have as much um, exposure to it. So you spend one year in prep school and then you'll start Naval Academy with the next class the following year. Uh, that, um, so yeah, nominations are, it's, it's good to have one, but if you don't have one, the door isn't closed to, um, to an appointment. Well, here's a really useful graph about how to think about um, applying to Naval Academy. Uh, so have a, if you're interested, have a look at this and kind of plan your own um, experience that way. Um, you start with the preliminary application and it takes you the whole way to uh, hopefully an offer of appointment. And about 8% of the people who start the preliminary application will get an appointment. I think the, the application process is so difficult that it weeds out a lot of people just because it takes a lot of time to complete. So even though it says it's an 8% acceptance rate, uh, I think that percentage is much higher among the folks who actually complete the application process. Oh, here's, the, uh, here's some of the prep schools I've talked about. Uh, the foundation program is what I did. And it's different. The Naval Academy funds people to go to prep school at civilian prep schools. And there's the, uh, the actual Naval Academy prep school. Uh, uh, about one quarter of the class goes to it before um, they start the Naval Academy. These are full year programs. I would never have passed chemistry if it wasn't for the Naval Academy foundation program. Um, Here's some advice for admissions. I think this, this is a really good point here. I, I, and without knowing either of your uh, academic journeys, uh, every, everybody goes in a different direction, but it's really good to challenge yourself to take, uh, even though you might get a, you not know, get as high of a grade. The Naval Academy looks very favorably on AP courses, honor courses, things that um, there may be your, you might not get an A in AP calculus, but the seeing that you took that course is really, um, is, it's well perceived by the admissions board. Um, and well-rounded, of course. Um, I think, I, I, try, I, have, I have a printed list of some of the questions that, that uh, I got through, through email here, but this is a good place to stop and you know, one, a good question would be, well, what, what would you suggest to me if I'm interested in applying to the Naval Academy, like how can I, how can I do the best? How can I have the best chance of getting in? I would say one, and I think this is for all colleges. Um, apply early. Uh, applying early signals to whoever the admissions board is is that you're really, really interested. You're really proactive, and um, the Naval Academy is no exception. Um, based on just in the military, it's it's good to be to show up a few minutes early for things. Same applies for applications. The second, and this is, you've probably heard this a million times, but I guess I'll say it again. Um, your grades in your sophomore, and I guess I'm talking to the junior here, in your junior year are just so important um, to getting into college and Naval Academy, the same thing. Uh, the junior year is really what is most heavily looked at uh, on the admissions board. Um, and I guess for the senior on the call, I'm sure you worked really hard during your junior year to get good grades and um, 
that they'll, they'll reflect you really well um, on whatever applications you're, you're doing in the future. And I think the second, the last thing that I'd suggest um, for the Naval Academy, and I think this applies to both students on, on the call today, is do something to make yourself stand out. Um, cr create a great story for yourself. Um, does that mean that you're um, going on a you know, miss missionary trip to, to Africa? Maybe, or maybe you're just doing something great in your community that, that shows that you're just a little bit different than somebody else. Maybe your SAT score isn't as high, but you, um, you volunteer as a, um, a tutor to fifth and sixth grade kids. I, I don't know, but find something that makes your story unique and, and make sure it's on your admissions application. Um, for me personally, it sounds almost funny looking back, but I, I volunteered at a local fire station and um, I think someone saw that and thought, wow, he's an interesting applicant. He's a team captain, has okay grades, but you know, could be better. Um, volunteers at his local fire department seems like someone that we'd really like to have as a part of the brigade of midshipmen. And I think that's something that even this summer you could do to, um, to make your application really stand out. Um, great, so we'll kind of move on. I could probably give you a hundred reasons to go to Navy, but here's the top five. Uh, and it's hard, and to be honest, guys, it's kind of hard to appreciate it until, you, uh, until you're there and you see it from, from a hindsight perspective, but it's just, uh, it really is a world-class opportunity. Um, and it's something that you know, all Americans should be aware of is something that's available to them if, if you work hard and something that you really want to do. Um, I don't know if it's something you really want to do, but if it is, uh, I'd, I'd love to be helpful in, in, in your journey and in getting there. I guess this this isn't something that exists in Rhode Island Naval Academy. Like, there's some kind of text message <laughs> you can send for more information. Um, NASA is for the Naval Academy Summer Seminar. Okay, that's a great um, great picture of graduation again. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Thanks. Uh, hopefully some of that was interesting. Thanks for enduring it with me. It, are there any questions about what we saw from, from anybody on the call here? Um, what we saw on the presentation? Um, if not, I'm happy to kind of just talk through a few things that came up over email, but we can, we can use this as a chance to take a pause and talk about anything on the presentation. So Larry, can you do me a favor? In your presentation, you had a couple of terms that I think aren't normal college terms. So you had midshipman, plebe, and I day, and okay. yard. You know, so Great. could you explain? Uh, th thank you, Mrs. Rose. Uh, the, the military has a way with acronyms, and the Naval Academy, the language of the Naval Academy is a little bit different than the language of uh, Harvard or Penn State or whatever. But at the Naval Academy, all the students are referred to instead of students, midshipmen. Um, so you have just the, in the, in the, the, the academy itself is all 4,000 students make up the brigade of midshipmen. So whenever I mention midshipmen, that's a student. Um, when I mention the yard, that is campus. Um, not, not a bit, bit of a nautical term, like a shipyard, I guess. And when I mention I day, um, that's a very memorable part of everybody's Naval Academy experience. The, the first day you, you know, leave home, show up on the yard and start plebe summer. Um, it's, 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 that's induction day, I day. So this, this, is gra this is kind of the opposite of I day. This is a graduation that was on the screen at the end. Um, and, and I day is the, that's the day your, your world changes a little bit from being a civilian to being a midshipman as part of the brigade. Uh, all, all students are considered active duty military. Um, so that's where the term midshipman comes from. Um, great, yeah, I guess it would have been more helpful up front, but I'm happy to you know, make okay. a distinction. Um, uh, and you're a plebe, which is a freshman, uh, all, all freshman, uh, typical freshman year, correct? Correct, yes, so plebes are freshmen. Um, you have a plebe as a freshman, you have a, a youngster, which is a, um, a sophomore, and uh, second class as a junior and a, a firstie as a senior. And the, you know, the plebe, 
the plebe experience isn't the same as a freshman in a normal college. Like you are, you're, you're kind of walking that line between the military and college life. Uh, so you have your classes, which Naval Academy midshipmen tends to carry a pretty heavy class load. And you have like your professional development, which is a plebe um, is all sorts of fun things. Like many things that are just, um, they're there to instill discipline. There are things that are, you, know, you look back at it today, it's like funny things like memorizing menus and learning about memorizing the characteristics of this ship. Um, things that are just teach you how to take in a lot of information fast and make good decisions. Um, once your plebe year is over, you, you gain a little bit more freedom from some of those things and you go into a more academic um, only uh, experience with most of your military happening in the summertime. I think, I think one of the, the, the cool things that are, are that you all go in and you, from the get go, you're, a, you're being trained to be leaders. Um, and so you get to experience that all together and you go through it all together and you all graduate at the same time. Um, right. Which is necessarily normal in a college um, situation. You know, some people might, you know, graduate a year later or, and you don't see all the people on, on your campus, but in, at the military academies, you see everybody all the time and you eat together. Right. You develop it was, Truly just one of the coolest experiences that can't be replicated somewhere else. To have a thousand people in a class that know that their destination is, is uh, service. And I, I saw a great question from Gabriella that I, if, I don't, if I don't answer it now, I'm gonna forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks, thanks for the question. Um, what, what about freshman year had the biggest impact on me? Um, that's, a, that's really, that's a good question. I have to think about it a second uh, since it's been, it's been a few years. Um, you know, I, I would say two things. Uh, one, I think it's, it's a very challenging experience. You, know, you do things like you're, you're, you're working out together at 5.30 every morning. You're you know, doing obstacle courses sometimes. You're, you're, you're swimming. You're memorizing things. You're just like kind of somewhat a little bit like boot camp. You know, people are yelling at you to recite certain things off memory. And it's, it's challenging. It's, it's challenging for the whole eight weeks that you do it. And what that instilled in me is that you know, when I approached challenging situations after that, I knew that I could overcome them. Um, I, I knew that there wasn't something that, uh, I, that I was just well accustomed to approaching challenging situations and finding my way across to the, to the other side of it. Um, so that was the first thing. I think that's kind of persisted throughout my life uh, and, and subconsciously maybe. Um, the second is it creates a bond um, with the folks. That, you know, folks go together in like groups of 40 through plebe summer. Um, you know, all of the people that I went through plebe summer with, um, I'm very close with. And I, you know, I think if I saw any one of them um, out somewhere, I'd be so excited to see them. And I just love to see them succeed in different parts of either the military, some of them are still in, and others doing great things in, in the civilian world. Um, you know, I, even Mrs. Rose's son, I, we spent plebe summer together, day one, room together for four years, spent two years in the Marine Corps together. And now I don't know if it's a weird, twist of fate in the universe, but Will's actually in Connecticut visiting some manufacturing plants and I'm gonna see him tonight. So I don't know why it was today and why I'm seeing you and him on the same day, but it's really uh, really exciting. I'll tell him you said hi when I see him. Um, but I think, thanks for that question. That was really, um, really, really good to explore. Um, okay. Uh, I, I know we're kind of running out of time here and there's, there's, there's a few really great questions um, that I just wanted to bring up. And I'll, I'll do so hopefully um, pretty quickly in the next seven minutes. Yeah. So can I ask you, um, you know, many sure. of the colleges um, today are test optional, meaning the SAT and ACT aren't required. So uh -huh. is the SAT and ACT s still a requirement for the Naval Academy? That's a really good question, Mrs. Rose. I will, I will get back to you on it. I know, I know that's changed quite a bit in the past year, year and a half. Um, I would expect that they would they would be in um, in step with the other institutions um, that are kind of in the same bucket, but I'd have to check on it for you. Okay. 
So I'm going to ask you, um, and I always put you on the spot for this, always. Um, so you you went through the military academy and you were an officer. When one of your your last duties was to be in at DFW um, and be a recruiter to get enlisted. Um, uh, yeah. Kids to sign up. So um, Texas is very uh, service oriented. So why would you choose to go to a military academy versus being enlisted? What are the benefits? And um, mm -hmm. okay, that's a great great question. It's and yeah, it's something that most people don't have exposure to, and I'm happy to talk through it a little bit. Um, so there's two paths you can go in the military. Uh, one is you, right out of high school, you enlist in the Marines, the Navy, the Army, you go to boot camp and you begin a career um, in you know, whatever service you enlist into. Uh, it's a great path. Uh, you know, I, if enlisting in the, 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 the enlisted folks are the, the backbone of the Marine Corps and the Navy and they do great work every day that uh, amazes, always amazes me as an officer and as an honor to, to lead them. Um, a, uh, is the other path is you become an officer, which is more of more of a leader role in the Navy or the Marine Corps. And to do that, you have to go to college or attend a service academy, which is going to college. Um, and how would I, what kind of advice would I give you on which path is right? Uh, I think that if your ambitions are to go to college and you, um, that's where you see yourself and that's something that, that drives you, uh, you should probably go to college and try to become an officer because you, you're obviously very capable and you, you probably have the ability to become a leader after college in the Navy or the Marine Corps. Um, but if, if college isn't a big part of your plans and you just want to serve your country, um, going, being an enlisted Marine or Navy or Army is a, a good path. But I don't, I wouldn't advise anybody to just jump into um, enlisting if uh, you think that college is the path because you, you can go to college after being enlisted, but you have to do it later in your career. I think it's important to go to college after high school if you have the opportunity to do so. And some of the, right? yeah, and some like to be a pilot or some of the other things like or SEAL or any of that, you pilot for sure, you have to have a college degree. Mm -hmm. right? right, to be a pilot, you have to have a college degree. Um, it, I think anytime if, if you if you don't have if, if you're if you have a college degree you are going to military into the military uh, to be a leader uh, of some aspect of the military if you're going if you're on the enlisted path like you will you're going to start at, at the ground level and eventually as time goes on you'll be leading um, you know, groups of other enlisted folks but what makes the officer out unique is from day one you're in charge of leading um, folks so and that and I, I just to be a leader uh to have those um seen to interact with those folks under under my command and to be like to be responsible for their success and to watch them grow and develop and to create great teams like that that always um inspired me and i hopefully it's might be something that inspires you all as well i saw a good question i i i missed it on the chat window though uh we encourage you to look into. Oh, great! That was that was that was an encouragement, not a uh, not a question. Um, let's see if there's anything. Yeah, and while Larry's yeah. looking there, if any of you have a question, you want to unmute yourself to ask. Here's the expert. Um, so ask now. I, you know, like Larry said, having help um, is part of the whole process, and you don't do this by yourself. So um, use your resource if you have any questions. And please, and Mrs. Rose, feel free to include my information. If if this is something that interests you and your you or your families want to talk through it and just um, explore it more or see how you, you can best create an application that gets you most competitively looked at, like I, I'd love to be helpful. Um, you know, if it was a, if it was a group of two hundred students, I, I might be a little bit more weary of throwing out my information, but I, I'd love to um, help as much as I can. So that's great. Thank you. So any other questions? No, I'm going to stop recording.